In this lecture, we are going to learn about lists and tuples. Now, lists and tuples are among the most popular data structures used in Python programming language for performing advanced and complex algorithms and operations. Lists and tuples both can store one or more values in a specific order. The values stored in a list or tuple can be of any type, that is, integer, string, or even a float. So let us start with lists. A list is a built-in data type used to store a collection of items. Lists are mutable, which means we can modify them by adding, removing, or changing the elements. The list is a collection of multiple values. Lists are defined in Python by enclosing a comma-separated sequence of values in square brackets. Let us take an example in the Jupyter Notebook. Let us create a list named Fruits and assign three values, Apple, Banana and Cherry. So Fruits is equal to Apple, Banana, Cherry. Executing this block of code, you can see how a list looks in Python. We can access the elements present inside a list by referring to the index number. If we want to access banana from the list fruits, then we can simply use the indexing method to fetch the specified item from the list. As you know, indexing in Python starts from zero, which means that the index of banana in the fruit list is one. So, to fetch banana from the list, we just have to write this code. You can see the result. We got is banana. Now, let us also learn about the built-in methods in lists. The built-in methods allow us to perform operations on them. The most common methods include append. This adds an element to the end of the list. Next is insert. It inserts an element at a specific index. Then we have remove. It removes the first occurrence of an element. Then we have pop. It removes and returns an element at a specific index. Then comes sort. It sorts the list in the ascending order. Then we have length. It returns the length of the list. Let us understand how the append method works. This line of code, fruits.appendGrape adds a new element that is grape to the end of the fruits list using the append method. The append method is used to add an item to the end of a list. Finally, we print the updated fruits list using the print function, which displays the list on the output console. When you run the code, it will output apple, banana, cherry, grape. This means that the new element grape has been successfully added to the fruits list. Next, we have the insert method to add an element to the list. The insert method allows us to insert an item at a specific position within the list. In this case, we are inserting the string pineapple at index 2. Remember that in Python, indexing starts from zero. So, index 2 refers to the third position in the list. After executing this line, the list fruits will be modified and pineapple will be inserted at index 2. The updated list will look like this. Apple, banana, pineapple, cherry, Grape. The print function is used to display the output on the console. 
In this case, we are printing the modified list fruits after inserting pineapple. When we run this code, it will output this. Apple, banana, pineapple, cherry, grape. So the final result is a list of fruits with pineapple inserted at the specified position that is index 2 in the list. The remove method here is used to remove the element grape from the list fruits. The remove method is a built-in function in Python that removes the specified element from a list. This line uses the print function to display the updated list fruits after removing the element grape. The print function outputs the value within the parentheses to the console. Apple, banana, pineapple, cherry. So the code creates a list of fruits and then removes the element grape from the list. Finally, it prints the updated list without the removed element. Next, we have the pop method that is used to remove and return the last element from a list. In this case, since no index is specified within the parentheses, it will remove and return the last element of the fruits list, which is cherry. The print function is used to display the content of a variable or a value. Here we are printing the modified fruits list after removing the last element. After executing fruits.pop, the cherry element is removed from the fruits list and the modified list is printed, which contains three elements, apple, banana, and pineapple. So the code creates a list of fruits, removes the last fruit, cherry, and prints the updated list of fruits. Next is the sort method, which sorts the element of the list in the ascending order. In this case, it will arrange the fruits alphabetically. The print function is used to display the sorted list of fruits. It outputs the content of the fruits list after it has been sorted. Finally, the len function helps us to display the total number of elements present inside a list. I hope that list and its operations are absolutely clear to you. Now let us understand how tuples work. A tuple is a built-in data type used to store an ordered collection of items. Tuples are similar to lists, but they are immutable, meaning their elements cannot be modified once created. And here is a beginner level introduction to tuples in Python. We are creating a tuple named fruits. A tuple is a collection of items enclosed within parentheses. Tuples are similar to lists, but they are immutable. That is, their elements cannot be modified once they have been created. In this case, the tuple fruits contains three elements, apple, banana, and orange. Each element is separated by a comma. To access a specific element in a tuple, we use square brackets with the index of the element we want to retrieve. In Python, indexing starts at zero. So the first element has an index zero, second element has the index of one, and so on. In the code provided, fruits one is used to access the element at index 1 of the fruits tuple. Remember that Python uses zero-based indexing. So fruits 1 refers to the second element of the tuple, which is banana. The print function displays the value of fruits 1, which is banana. So when we run this code, it will output banana. This code demonstrates 
how to create a tuple and retrieve a specific element from it using index. Now let us take a look at the tuple operations. Tuples support various operations such as concatenation, repetition and slicing. Let us start with concatenation. To understand the concatenation operation, we have to define two tuples, fruits and vegetables. Fruits contain the elements apple, banana and orange. Veg contains the elements tomato, potato and onion. To combine the two tuples, the plus operator is used. The plus or the addition operator in this case concatenates the two tuples together, resulting in a new tuple that contains all the elements from both veg and fruits. The order of concatenation is based on the order of the operands. The combined tuple is assigned to the variable combined tuple. Finally, the print function displays the contents of the combined tuple. The output of the code will be tomato, potato, onion, apple, banana, orange. So this demonstrates how tuples can be created and concatenated together using the addition operator. Now tuples are immutable data structures in Python, so their elements cannot be changed once defined. They can be useful for storing collections of related items, such as in this example where we combined fruits and vegetables into a single tuple. We have a tuple called fruits that contains the elements apple, banana and orange. The line repeated tuple equal to fruits into three creates a new tuple called repeated tuple. It uses the repetition operator, which is an asterisk, to repeat the elements of the fruits tuple three times. When we print the value of repeated tuple using the print function, it will output the repeated elements of the fruits tuple. So in this specific example, the output will be apple, banana, orange, apple, banana, orange, apple, banana, orange. The elements of the fruits tuple are repeated three times in the repeated tuple. The repetition operation is a convenient way to create a new tuple with duplicated elements. Now, let us understand the slicing operations in tuples. Here, we perform slicing on the fruits tuple. Slicing allows us to extract a portion or subset of the original sequence. In this case, we start from index 1, which is the second element in the tuple, because indexing starts from 0, and then include all the elements until the end of the tuple. The result of the slicing operation is assigned to the variable sliced tuple. Therefore, Sliced tuple will contain the elements from index 1 to the end of the fruits tuple. In this example, it will include banana and orange. And with this, we come to the end of this lecture. In this, we learned about lists and tuples. We also learned about the operations associated with lists and tuples.